So remember a few years ago, they started to tell us that actually sex differences weren't real. And you thought to yourself, well, I took biology. I know that men and women are physical categories, and I am one, so I kind of know it's true. And they said, relax. It's only about being sensitive to a small percentage of the population who are different. You don't want to judge them. You're not a bigot, are you? And you think to yourself, no, I'm kind of liberal-minded. I want to bother other people live how they want to live. It's like it's going to affect my life. <laughs> Oh, but it is going to affect your life. In fact, it's going to reorder society completely. Here's the latest example of it. At the University of Pennsylvania, a biological man has decided to say that he's a woman, he's a swimmer, and he's destroyed the women's swimming records. Of course, because he's a man, actually. The swimmer goes by the name of Leah Thomas, competed for three years as a man before he decided to identify as a woman. And in a recent women's competition, he just won a 500-yard freestyle by a full 14 seconds. Now, if you swim or ever do a swim meet, 14 seconds? Uh -huh. That's time enough to get a beer and come back. Like that, there's no 14-second differences between swimmers. But there are now. Thomas's closest rival in a longer freestyle race was 38 seconds behind. That's a different country. So one person who actually did predict this at great personal cost, she's really hated for saying it, but she was right, is Karadansky, the author of The Abolition of Sex, the president of the U.S. chapter of the Women's Human Rights Campaign, longtime card-carrying member of the American left, but a very brave person. Karadansky joins us tonight. Kara, thanks so much for coming on. You must feel a little vindicated because when we first started having these conversations years ago, you predicted things like this and people attacked you for being crazy. Thank you so much for having me. And and yes, I mean, a lot of us saw this coming down the pike. There's a woman named Beth Stelzer who founded an organization called Save Women Sports several years ago. She's going to be speaking with your colleague, Laura Ingram, later tonight. Many of us saw this coming. And it's just very important that we all understand that situations like what we're seeing in Pennsylvania at the University of Pennsylvania um, are not anomalous. This is happening all yeah. over the country, as, as I know you know. Well, it's just amazing that people put up with it. I mean, 30, if, you, if you've been a swimmer or had kids who swim, 38 seconds doesn't happen in competitive swimming. I mean, that's not even, that's a different sport. So this has totally upended a sport that we've had for, you know, over 100 years in this country. Where are all the parents, the coaches, the swimmers? Like, why isn't anybody saying anything? A lot of people are saying things. A lot of parents are speaking out. I think a lot of students are very scared of speaking out because saying, look, this isn't appropriate. We shouldn't have men competing in women's sports is a very unpopular thing to say. The other thing I just want to say is very often this is framed as having so-called transgender athletes part participating in women's sports. And yes. I really want us to get away from that language. The truth of the matter is that he is a man and he's been right. allowed to compete in women's sports. Part of the problem is that a lot of this is happening because of a series of orders that the Biden administration issued over the course of the first six months of the administration impacting Title IX, among other federal administrative laws. And it essentially says that throughout federal administrative law, the word sex has to be redefined to include the words gender identity. And that is a disaster for women and girls, including the women who are on the UPenn women's swimming team. Yeah, well, it just eliminates women and girls but, as, a, as a meaningful category, like they don't exist anymore. So how can you undo this? I mean, let's be honest, you, you cover this stuff. I, I'm from Washington. Like you, you change something like that, no one ever changes it back, right? Well, so there is currently a lawsuit pending that was filed by 20 states, and I'm proud to say that the U.S. chapter of the Women's Human Rights Campaign submitted a brief in that case arguing that redefining sex to include the nebulous, nonsensical concept of gender identity also right. constitutes sex discrimination. And so I'm very happy to be involved in that lawsuit. But I also just want to note that what I unpack in the book shows that this goes far beyond sports. So we're seeing, for example, and we've talked about this before too, states like California, Washington, and other states across the country are allowing convicted male rapists and murderers to be housed in women's prisons on the basis of their so-called gender identity. We're seeing yeah. the total invasion of women's spaces, prisons, bathrooms, locker rooms, changing rooms, and sports by men on the basis of their so-called female gender identity. And what I really want everyone to understand is that words like gender identity don't have any meaning. They really yes. don't. I mean, they're That's right. defined variously, inconsistently, and um, vaguely in ways that don't make any sense. 
every single human being is either a male person or a female person. Everything else is a lie. Man, I, I, if you ever have an hour, I'd love to sit down and just hear what your life has been like since you started saying obvious truths like that uh, on television. I think you've paid a, a big cost. I would love to hear about it at some point. Anyway, in the meantime, thank you. Well, Cara if Dance. I could just make one plea. Yeah. I have, uh, can I make one plea of to course. your viewers? Okay. So I have one plea to make, which is this. As Tucker knows, I'm a registered Democrat, as he said right. in my introduction. I have made common cause with many Republicans who are fighting back against so-called gender identity ideology. One thing that has frustrated me is that across the political spectrum, people still seem to be of the view that the phrase transgender people, the phrase transgender athlete, the phrase transgender student, the phrase transgender prisoner has some sort of coherent meaning. It doesn't. Right. And so my plea to your viewers in particular, I know that it's Republicans who are holding the line. I don't like it, but I know it's true. Republicans are holding the line on material reality. All of that goes out the window when you use a word like transgender. It You're just totally doesn't right. exist. And it's I'm, so I'm begging viewers to stop using it. Thank it's you so, so much. so smart. The language matters. Kara Dansky, thank you so much.